Gold is now on its way to $3,000 an ounce. This is the latest note from a major US bank. And I'm going to show you in today's video why this does look to be the case. And I'm also going to show you at the end of the video three gold mining stocks which have serious upside potential if we are going to get a run in gold to $3,000. Gold holds near record after power firms rate cut next month. Fed chief says time has come to pivot to monetary easing. Bullion steady in Asia on Monday after jumping 1.1% on Friday. This Bloomberg article goes on to say gold steadied near a record high after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell affirmed expectations the central bank will start cutting interest rates next month. Bullion traded near $2,510 an ounce after rising 1.1% on Friday. Powell said the time has come to pivot to monetary easing at Jackson Hole, Wyoming on Friday, and also made clear his intention to prevent further calling in the US labor market. So it's that phrase, the time has come to pivot to monetary policy easing. Why? Because Jerome Powell states that he doesn't want any more calling in the labor market. Raising interest rates, you're going to call the labor market down. This is what they've been doing. At the same time, they're reducing inflation. And of course, that's the primary goal. You know, Federal Reserve raises interest rates not to call the labor market down, but to call inflation down. And the labor market calling is a derivative of that. It's not actually the main goal, it's a secondary effect. And actually, the Federal Reserve would be quite happy if they could get inflation down without calling the labor market. So Jerome Powell has basically come out on Friday, said they are going to cut in September, and it's because he doesn't want any further deterioration or calling in the labor market. And that's important because by linking the rate cuts coming in September to a deterioration or a calling of the labor market, instead of saying, well, we're cutting rates because inflation is coming down, that suggests they're gonna be cutting rates even with inflation potentially above their 2% target. And that inflationary outlook is something that is going to be supportive of gold prices going higher. A second headline across Bloomberg, gold bulls celebrate as Jackson Hole reinforces bets on rally. The Fed is now getting in line, infrastructure capital says. Lower yields, weaker dollar and ETF inflows are seen aiding the prices of gold. And if I pull up this chart, you can see that gold is getting a boost from ETF buying. We're starting to see flows coming into ETFs and this has been something that has really not helped the gold price, as you can see, leading into 2024. Gold was kind of moving sideways and we had ETF outflows. They kind of bottomed in May and now we're starting to see traders and investors coming back into the ETFs, giving gold a boost. The article goes on to say there are also signs of a revival in demand for gold back ETFs. Holdings in SPDR gold shares, one of the leading products, have expanded for eight straight weeks, the longest run of inflows since mid-2020. So the obvious question then is, who are the buyers of these ETFs? Is this a bunch of retail rushing at the highs and something we should be very careful about? Or is this more sophisticated positioning which suggests more upside in gold and these ETFs and potentially even some of those gold miners over the next six to nine months. And as you're about to see, a lot of this money coming into gold ETFs is smart money. For now, Citigroup Inc. sees inflows into ETFs expanding significantly over the next six to 12 months with demand bolstered by looser monetary policy as well as a potential increase in volatility amid recessionary risks. Gold may reach $3,000 by mid-2025, the bank said in a note before Powell's address. Among investors, interest has become more widespread. Hedge funds and speculators have been adding bullish wagers on COMEX with net long bullion positions hitting the highest in more than four years. This is according to the Commodity Futures Trading Commission data. And if I pull up this chart, you can see it's hedge funds who are piling in to bullish gold and bullish gold ETF positions. And you can see clearly this positioning by smart money is taking place as the rate cuts are starting to come and as the cutting cycle begins, where they haven't been taking these bets all the time we've had higher for longer and interest rates in the US up five, five and a half percent. So why are we seeing right now, Citibank, major US banks calling for $3,000 gold over the next nine months, hedge funds now piling into long gold positions or long gold ETF positions. Why is it that with Jerome Powell cementing that September rate cut, this is happening? Well, let's go and have a look at the data and I'll show you. The answer to that question is in this chart. What we're looking at here is we're looking at gold and that's the gold line here, just to make this a little bit easier. 
And in the black and white candles, we're looking at interest rates in the US, but we're looking at the real interest rate. In other words, interest rate adjusted for inflation. And we're getting this by taking the 10 year yield, so the benchmark interest rate in the US, and we're subtracting from that the 10 year break even inflation rate. And as you can see, when we start to see real interest rates coming down in the US, we see gold benefiting from this. You can see back in 2019 or 2018, we start to see real rates coming down in the US. And what happens to gold? It starts to move in the other direction. We see real rates coming down, we get the COVID shock, we get interest rates continue to come down in real terms. And again, remember, when we're talking about real interest rates, you can have real interest rates coming down because the interest rate itself is coming down, or you could have real rates going down because inflation is going higher. Now think about what we talked back to earlier on in the video. If we're getting Jerome Powell cutting interest rates, we're going to see rates coming down. This is going to be bearish or negative for real interest rates in the US. And at the same time, we could actually see inflation picking up in the next cycle. So now you've got interest rates coming down and you could see an uptick or at least inflation starting to settle above the 2% target, which central banks have previously had. This sets up fundamentally going forwards over the next cycle, a very bullish case for gold. And if we come back over to the chart, you can see right here what happens. We see real interest rates in the US bottom and gold starts to suffer. As real rates go up, we start to see gold come down. It goes into a consolidation period. And then what happens over here? We start to see rates going up. Gold starts to pop up. They kind of move in together. And then we start to see a big rally in the real interest rate in the US. And this is where we start to kick into that hiking cycle, that fast hiking cycle from Powell. And this is the period, once we start to see real interest rates going up in the US, that those hedge funds start to move out of that positioning. Remember we looked at the chart, hedge funds were kind of positioned, was going sideways, we saw ETF outflows. It's because real rates were going up in a fast hiking cycle. Now we're about to get the opposite. And you can see here that as real rates go up, gold suffers. Real rates go up, gold suffers. Real rates go up, and then we start to see real rates peak over here. So real interest rates in the US start to come down or at least move sideways, and this is bullish for gold. Gold takes another leg up. We then get this rally in real rates and gold suffers. And now we've had a peak in real interest rates in the US. This sell-off and this attempt to make a new high has already seen gold rally. But when you look at this, when you look at where gold is in relation to real interest rates, it looks like there's still quite a long way down to go in real interest rates. And if you look at this technically, which you can do on any of these kind of data charts, you can see a failure to make a high over here very often leads to quite a bigger reversal. For example, here's your low, here is your high, here's your failure to make a low on the way up, and look at this massive rally. So there's every reason to think we are heading much lower in terms of real interest rates in the US. And actually, that means that this move in gold may only just be getting started. So if we still have quite a way to go to the downside in real rates and ergo, it means the gold price is only just getting started to the upside, then of course, one of the biggest beneficiaries of this stands to be gold miners. And some of these have been really beaten down of late. And I want to show you three gold stocks, which if we're going to start to see real rates coming down and we're going to see gold moving higher, these three gold stocks are very strongly correlated with the price of gold and have very good upside potential over the next six to nine months. So the first stock we're going to look at is Barrick Gold Corp, ticker G-O-L-D. And this is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And this is a gold miner where when we run the fair value models on this stock, you can see the previous daily close was at 2047 and fair value in this stock fundamentally sits at 2314. So already just to get back to fair value, so we're not talking about this stock becoming overvalued, we're just talking about this stock getting back to fair value, you have about 13% upside. And if I pull up the weekly chart here, you can see a couple of things. First and foremost, this asset is very strongly correlated to the gold price. As you can see, gold kind of pushes higher, then Barrick pushes higher. Gold sells off, 
you see Barrick selling off. Gold starts to rally, Barrick starts to rally. Gold sells off, Barrick starts to sell off. Now, right down here in this area, we start to see Barrick Corporation selling off as the price of gold moves higher. So we're starting to see a divergence between these assets. And if the gold price isn't coming down because it's set to continue as real rates fall, then we should be looking at the divergence to close with Barrett Corporation catching up to the gold price. Now, if I just take the gold price off for a second so we can just look at this technically speaking, a couple of things you can notice here. First of all, fair value sits right here at 2314 fundamentally. So just based on a number of the models from the earnings, cash flow, all these things, we should be looking at a fair value of 2314 anyway, you know, just without a massive rally in the gold price. And you can see this stock doesn't become overvalued until we hit 2662. Now, very often, especially when you have a catalyst like a surge in gold price, you can see markets breaching their fair value and pushing into overvalued territory. And then it comes back to fair value. We breach and we go into overvalued territory. Then we come back to fair value. Then we become undervalued, back to fair value, back to undervaluation, back to fair value. And previously, as we've seen this stock selling off, we actually reached the 1618, which in terms of fair value is extremely undervalued. So you're undervalued roughly at the 1966, but you're extremely undervalued in the 1618 area. And we've started to see it catching back up as gold has moved higher. So there is plenty of upside to the 2314. And what I like about this is technically, you actually have two patterns here. You have a double bottom for a start, which is broken over here. It breaches, it pulls back, we fail to make a low, and now we're starting to break out. And when you get these double bottoms, kind of comes down, tests, and then it, instead of breaking straight away, it tends to kind of sell off like this and then rally again. That kind of turns into a, not textbook, but it is somewhat of an inverse head and shoulders because this is a higher low, this is a lower low, and this is another higher low. And now we're starting to break out with momentum. Look at this. As we've started to see gold going higher in price and we've started to see real rates coming down, we're seeing this breakout above the 1895 technically. So any pullback in this area and preferably, I mean, if you can get this back in terms of undervaluation, you know, as an allocation into a portfolio, let's just say, for example, then the 1966 area, any breach below this, we turn undervalued once again. And that really puts, you know, 20, even more, 25%, 30% on the table if we're going to go not just to fair value, but up in towards overvalued territory at the 2662. So a really nice gold stock to keep an eye on, maybe consider for an allocation to portfolio. If we're going to continue to get real rates down, making new lows, and this of course being supportive for the gold price. The next stock we're going to look at is Harmony Gold Mining Company Limited. It's actually based in South Africa, but listed on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker HMY. And you can see the daily close was 10.24 with fair value sitting at 11.74. So again, already, just to get back to fair value, this stock has about 15% upside. Now, if I pull this stock up on the chart, you can see this is an asset that's very tightly correlated to the gold price. And in fact, unlike gold, where we just saw, and by gold, I mean Barrick Gold, ticket G-O-L-D. Unlike Barrick Gold, which we've just seen a divergence and it looks set to close that divergence by catching up with gold, this is an asset which is actually very, very tightly correlated still. We don't see much of a divergence. So one thing you might want to consider is waiting to see if we can get a bit of a pullback in this asset before stepping in or adding it to your portfolio if it is a stock that you like. And you can see it is a stock which has really based nicely from really down by you know one or two dollars and we're starting to get a major breakout to the upside in this asset so if you zoom in a little bit and i take the gold price off just so we can see this a bit clearer there are a couple of very important numbers to take note of one of them is the 9.01 so if we start to trade below 9.01 in harmony gold mining corporation you know over the next few weeks Especially if you continue to see gold pushing higher and we get that divergence, a bit like with Barrett Gold and the gold price. Any trade below the 9.01, this is a stock that becomes undervalued fundamentally. And again, from where we're at, you've got about 15% upside. If we start to turn undervalued in this stock below $9, you pretty much have about 30, 40% upside just to push through fair value. And if this is a stock that's going to really break out higher, and we could, 
And I'll tell you why, because we've just had a major breakout of this high, technically speaking. So if we pull back and we start to enter, let's say between $750 and $9, this really could be a stock with the continuation of the gold price higher and real rates coming down. This can really be a stock that can outperform to the upside. And you can see if you get this somewhere down near the $758, you're looking at nearly 100% if we're going to see this stock become overvalued over the next, say, six months or so, above $1,450 roughly. And the final stock we're going to look at is Franco Nevada, ticket FNV. And this is not as undervalued as the other two stocks we just looked at, but it is trading around fair value. And based on a ton of models, it does look like if we're going to move into overvalued territory, we do still have a significant amount of upside in this stock. And if we jump over to the chart here, you can see very much like the Barrett Gold setup, we've got this divergence forming between Franco Nevada Corporation and the price of gold. This is a stock very tightly correlated with gold. You see gold selling off, Franco Nevada sells off. Gold rallies, Franco Nevada rallies. Franco Nevada sells off, gold sells off, but gold bottoms here and we still get a continuation down in Franco Nevada. And now we're starting to reverse, we're consolidating, and it looks like we're set in this asset if gold is going to continue higher based on everything we looked at in the video then it does look like franco nevada is also going to close that divergence by moving to the upside now it's at fair value so this is not an undervalued stock like the other two however you can see based on where we are currently even from here we have and whether you like to short-term trade things you know on the way i mean if this moves up to the 157, 160 area, you might get multiple short-term buying opportunities or whether you're running a portfolio and you're looking for asset allocation, you could see that this is an asset which has roughly 27% to the upside and so still offers significant upside potential despite being at fair value. And finally, if I take the gold price off just for a second so you can see this, notice how previous times when we surpassed fair value, we went up into overvalued territory at the 157 and that marked the high back to fair value, back up to overvalued at the 157. Then we come back to fair value, back up to overvalued at the 157. So with that divergence now forming between gold and this stock, which is now just starting to catch up, it does look like, based on what we've seen historically, there's every chance we could be coming back up to the 157 or 160 in this stock. So that is it from me for today, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not consider joining us in the GMT training room each day where I look at the best markets as well as sharing real-time setups that I'm personally looking at trading with members as part of our GMT training program. Don't forget, you can also get a two-week free trial to the Cutting Edge Hedge Dash trading app used in today's video by heading over to www.hedgedash.com. Access to the Cutting Edge Hedge Dash platform is included with every GMT membership.